Assalamualaikum and a good day to all. Okay, today um, I will teach on how to start a DC motor. Okay, the starting of DC motor is somewhat different from the starting of all other types of electrical motors. This difference is credited to the fact that a DC motor, unlike other types of motor, has a very high starting current that has the potential of damaging the internal circuits of the DC motor if not restricted to some limited value. So this limitation to the starting current of DC motor is broke about by means of the starter. Thus, the distinguishing fact about the starting methods of DC motor is that it is facilitated by means of a starter. Okay, or rather, a device containing a variable resistance connected in series to the armature winding so as to limit the starting current of DC motor to a desired optimum value taking into consideration the safety aspect of the motor. Okay, why does a DC motor have such a high starting current? So, okay, the basic operational voltage equation of DC motor is given by Okay, V equal to A plus IA RA. Okay, so from this equation, IA equal to V minus EA divided by R. Okay, uh, V is the terminal voltage and EA is the back EMF voltage. Okay, now when the motor is at rest, obviously the back EMF equal to zero. Why? Because E, EA equal to K flux omega. And the omega is the angular speed at starting. Okay, at starting, omega equal to zero. So EA also equal to zero. So okay. So what happened here? So IA equal to V over RA. So starting current depends on terminal voltage and armature resistance. Okay. In practical DC machines, armature resistance is basically very low. Okay, generally about 0 0.5 ohm. Therefore, a large current flows through the armature during starting. And then this current is large enough to damage the armature circuit. Okay, let's say V equal to 220 volt. Okay, 220 volt. Divide by 0 0.5. So you will get high current here. Okay. 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 Due to this excessive starting current, the fuses may blow out and the armature winding or commutator brush arrangement may get damaged. And the very high starting torque will be produced. Okay, why? Because torque equal to K flux IA. So starting, if you want to calculate the starting torque, you need to use a starting current. Okay. So, and this high starting torque may cause huge centrifugal force which may throw off the armature winding. And then other loads connected to the same source may experience a dip in the terminal voltage. Okay. 
and a large DC motor will pick up speed, speed rather slowly due to its large rotor inertia. Hence, building up the back EMF slowly, causing the level of high starting current maintained for quite some time. This may cause several damage. Okay, to avoid this, a suitable DC motor starter must be used. Very small DC motors, however, may be started directly by connecting them to the supply with the help of a contactor or a switch. And it does not result in any harm because the gather speed quickly due to small rotor inertia. In this case, the large starting current will die down quickly because of the fast rise in the back EMF. Okay. Okay, to avoid the above dangers while starting a DC motor, it is necessary to limit the starting current. So, a DC motor is started by using a starter. Okay, so the starter is used to limit the starting current. There are various types of DC motor starter. Okay. Such as we have a three point starter, four point starter, no load release coil starter, thyristor control starter, and etc. And then the basic concept behind every DC motor starter is adding external resistance to the armature winding during starter. So we add additional resistance in series with the armature resistor. Okay. Okay, this is the three point starter. Okay, the internal wiring of a three point starter is shown in this figure. Okay, when the connected DC motor is to be started, the lever is turned gradually. Okay, this is the lever. So the lever is turned gradually to the right. Okay, from left to the right. When the lever touch point 1, okay, this is the point 1, the field winding gets directly connected across the supply and the armature winding gets connected with resistances R1 to R5 in series. We have a R1, R2, R3 and R4 and R5 connected in series. And during starting, full resistance is added in series with the armature circuit. Okay. Then, as the lever is moved further, the resistance is gradually cut off from the armature circuit. Now, as the lever reaches to point 0.6, okay, point 0.6, this is the point 0.65 and this point run, Okay, all the resistance is cut off from the armature circuit and armature gets directly connected across the supply. Okay, this is actually, this is a shunt motor. Okay, you have an armature circuit here and then you have a field circuit here. This is the terminal voltage. Okay, the electromagnetic E, no voltage coil. Okay, this is the no voltage no voltage coil holds the lever at this position and then this electromagnetic release the lever when there is no supply voltage okay it can be seen that when the arm is moved from the position one to the last position okay the starter resistance gets added in series with the field winding okay and then it is also connected with the field winding and then but as the value of starter resistance is very small as compared to the shunt resistance the decrease in shunt field current may be negligible okay however to overcome this drawback a brass or copper arc may be employed within a three-point starter which makes a connection between the moving arm and the field winding. Okay. And then when the motor is 
overloaded beyond a predefined value over current release electromagnetic. Okay, release the mag release the electromagnetic. Okay, gets activated, which short circuits electromagnetic, and hand release the lever, and the motor is turned off. Okay. This is for the three point starter, and then we have a four point starter. Okay, the main difference between a three point starter and a point starter is that the no voltage coil is not connected in series with the field coil, no voltage coil. This is no voltage coil, and then this is the this is a field winding. Okay. It is not connected in series compared to the three point starter, and then the field winding gets directly connected to the supply. Okay, okay, the no voltage coil is connected with a current limiting resistance RH. We have the RH here. Okay, this arrangement ensures that any change of current in the shunt field does not affect the current through hole on coil. Okay, and then this means electromagnetic pull of the hole on coil will always be sufficient so that the spring does not unnecessarily restore the lever to the off position. A point a four point starter is used where the field current is to be adjusted by means of a field real start for the purpose of operating the motor above rated speed by reducing the field current. Okay, it mean that if you want to control the speed by flux control method, we can use this starter. Okay. Okay, next we have a tie resistor motor starter. Means that we control the armature current by this chopper. Okay, we connect we connect the terminal terminal of the um, DC motor with the armature chopper. Okay, and then the last one is the DC series motor starter. Okay, okay, this is the very basic. Uh, this is the very basic connection of the DC series motor starter. Okay, this is the series motor DC motor, and we have this uh, real start, real start, or uh, we have this starter to control to control the. Um, starting current okay the start arm is simply moved towards the right to start the motor we have a start arm here and we we can move the start arm to 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 until 0 0.5 thus maximum resistance is connected in series with the armature during starting and then gradually decrease as the start arm move towards right. Okay, the starter is sometimes also called as a two point starter. And then the no load release coil holds the start arm to the run position and leave it when the voltage is lost. Okay, thank you.